Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Hi, folks. Welcome back. And those that are new, welcome. Some video clips I put together uh, concerning Hunter Biden and our current president, Joseph Biden. And it's very interesting. The two-tier justice system. Frankly, what they're doing is they're laughing right in your face. Now, this is going to start with a clip right after Hunter Biden pleaded guilty to tax evasion and a weapons charge. He's at a state dinner with a whole bunch of big shots and dignitaries and everything else. And let's look at some of the video here as we go along, not just for the state dinner, but how the White House is handling it. And I'll make a comment along the way. Let's listen. Distinguished guests, please make your way to your seats. Dinner will begin shortly. Thank you. Absolutely no shame. No shame. Look at him. This guy's a pariah. He should be toxic. He should be politically and business-wise toxic. And yet the there he House is. House Ways and Means Committee yesterday released documents. Their authenticity nowhere challenged. Uh, that included a July 2017 WhatsApp message sent by Hunter Biden to Henry Zhao, a Chinese Communist Party official, which stated in its entirety, and I quote, I am sitting here with my father, and we would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. Now listen to what he has to say. And more importantly, look at the response from the White House spokesman. It's fascinating. Tell the director that I would like to resolve this now before it gets out of hand and now means tonight. And Z, if I get a call or text from anyone involved in this other than you, Zhang, or the chairman, I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me and every person he knows and my ability to forever hold a grudge, that you will regret not following my direction. I am sitting here waiting for the call with my father, unquote. So just a couple of questions about this. First, does this not undermine uh, the president's claim during the 2020 campaign and the reaffirmations of that claim by his two press secretaries since then that he never once discussed his son's overseas business dealings with him? No, and I'm not going to comment further on this. We're good. We're good. I, I'm not. James, James, let me just, let me save you some, let me save, let me save, let me save you some breath if you're going to ask about this. I am not addressing, I don't, I know you do, more than I'd like you to have. I am not going to address this issue from this podium. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. Mr. Vice President, how many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about that. Now, this is during the 2020 campaign. Biden, even with his senility and his dementia, knows what the truth is. And he lies, and he lies, and he lies right to Peter Perducci's face from Fox News. And it's deflection at a, at a level that I can't even begin to tell you. Let's listen. And so how do you know? Let's, let's talk about, here's what I know. I know Trump deserves to be investigated. He is violating every basic norm of a president. You should be asking him the question, why is he on the phone with a foreign leader? trying to intimidate a foreign leader, if that's what happened. That appears what happened. You should be looking at Trump. Trump's doing this because he knows I'll beat him like a drum. And he's using the abuse of power and every element of the, the uh, presidency to try to do something to smear me. Everybody looked at this and everybody's looked at it and said there's nothing there. Ask the right question. Mr. Biden. <laughs> laughing right in your face and here we have the press secretary Karine Jean-Pierre the only thing good about her is she has an amazing name other than that totally unqualified to the state dinner last night um, I'm wondering if you could take us into the thinking and decision making of why uh, the president decided to I, I'm just not going to get into family discussion personal family discussion as you know, Hunter is his son. I'm just not going to get into it. If, if Hunter Biden wasn't the president's son, would he have invited someone who had just reached a plea agreement with federal prosecutors? Well, a, co a couple of things. Again, that's his son. It's a, he's a family member. It is not uncommon for family members to attend 
uh, events at the White House. You could look at past presidents. I'm sure you have. So that is not uncommon. Uh, as it relates to anything uh, uh, related to uh, to Hunter, I'm just not going to respond to it from here. Just not going to respond to it, which is fascinating because everything under the sun concerning Trump and the Republicans, their mouths don't stop moving. All of a sudden now, they've gone deaf and dumb. Can I follow up on that? Okay. No, I just called in somebody. Go ahead. Yeah, so, but I mean, so Kirby wouldn't answer James's question, though. Are you going to answer the question? It's not, not a reasonable question to ask no, whether the President I, of the United States was involved, as this message seems to suggest, in some sort of a coercive conversation for business dealing by a son. Is that something, <laughs> if he wasn't, then maybe you should tell us. So that. here's the thing. This is what's going to happen. They're going to throw Hunter out of the bus. They did. He'll pay the taxes on the, what is it, two million or whatever it was, and the gun charge. He'll go into a diversion program, and that will be the end of it. And they'll be back on ragging Trump and the Republicans again, and more specifically, the mega Republicans. And their mouths will have lots of comments for that. Remember, you heard it here first. This is the plan to remove Joe Biden, not from the presidency, but to have him run again. And this is leading up to that. I, and I appreciate the question. I believe my colleague uh, at the White House Council uh, has answered this question already, has dealt with this, has uh, uh, made it very clear. I just don't have anything to share outside of what, what my colleagues have shared. Uh, and so I would refer you to him and the, D and the DOJ. Just not going to comment from here. <laughs> I will I will say nothing. I'm just a press secretary. I actually talk for a living. I represent the President of the United States. I am his spokesperson, AK mouthpiece. And I have nothing to say. Isn't that fascinating? Well, what I can tell you is I know that my colleague has dealt with this. He, he uh, addressed this at the White House Council. I just don't have anything else to share. I just, I just answered answer the no. question. I just answered the question. No, yes or no, was the president involved in the I just answered. Stephen, yes no, Stephen, I just answered the question. I just said, I just, this is, it's not up to you how I answer the question. I just answer the question by telling you my colleagues at the White House Council has dealt with this, and I would refer you to them. Then when you go to the White House Council, they go deaf, dumb, mute as well. Read some pre three by five card statement. They don't deny any of it, if you noticed. They deny nothing. Can you just remind us what your colleagues said? From the White House Council, so we have it. I would, I would, I would refer you to them, and they will share their statement with all of you. My question is about your statements from that podium. You stated that the president stands by his comment from the 2020 campaign that he never once discussed his son's overseas business dealings with his son, and you stood at that podium yeah. and you reaffirmed that. Do you stand by your reaffirmation? I, what I will. What I find fascinating is the press is getting po'd. They're getting pissed off. They want something to report. But the fact of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen of the press corps, the vast majority of you, 90, 95 percent, did everything in your power to make sure that Joe Biden would win the election in 2020. Now you act mad and frustrated. You brought it upon yourself. You're the dog that caught the car. Now what do you do? You're screwed. If Trump wins next year, you guys are finished. The mainstream media is finished anyway. You're the dinosaurs and the asteroid is coming. Let's listen on. Say is nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. And I will leave it there. Anything else, I will refer you to the White House Council. This is not a change. I just answered the question. You asked, you just asked me, do, does my statement change? I just told you nothing has changed. That's answering the question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Stephen. I'm calling on your colleague right now. Go ahead. Thank you. To, to follow up. Condescending. Condescending and arrogant. You know, there's nothing wrong with arrogance if you've got something to be arrogant about. Um, my colleague, is there anything that you can say with regard to this text message and what the president's son was alleging? Was the president there or not? I would refer you to my colleagues at the White House Council. 
they have addressed this and I refer you to them. Go ahead. Have you spoken to the president about this? Have you asked him whether he was there with his son on July 30th? This is not a conversation that I've had with the president. Again, I would refer you to the White House counsel. Do you plan to have that conversation no. with the president? No. Did the president speak with the attorney general at all? I, can, I, 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 I cannot say uh, if the president uh, had had a conversation with the attorney general last night. What I can refer you to is the White House counsel's office as it relates to the uh, allegations. Uh, they've already addressed this. This is something for them to deal with. I refer you to the Department of Justice on anything else if you don't want to speak to the White House counsel's Mr. office. Mr. Vice President, how many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas Why? Direct lie. That's not even shitting the truth. That's not even a lie of omission. It's a straight out lie. This is from the campaign of 2020. And Peter Ducey, I think it was worth seeing this clip again. Just let it sink in. All you Biden voters, I know you hate Donald Trump. And millions of you thought you were doing the right thing. Put your animosity and sometimes Trump derangement syndrome aside. Look what you've created. This is on you. And that's not a chastisement. That's to say there's a way to fix this if you're willing to admit you are wrong. And so how do you know? How do you know? Here's what I know. I know Trump deserves to be investigated. He is violating every basic norm of a president. You should be asking him the question. Why is he on the phone with a foreign leader trying to intimidate a foreign leader? If that's what happened, that appears what happened. You should be looking at Trump. Trump's doing this because he knows I'll beat him like a drum. And he's using the abuse of power and every element of the, the uh, presidency to try to do something to smear me. Everybody looked at this and everybody's looked at it and said there's nothing there. Ask the right question. Mr. Body, okay. you know, um Republicans in Congress have... Now we're going to hear from the current Attorney General of the United States, Merrick Garland. Who, by the way, if those you don't remember, he feels he was screwed out of a Supreme Court seat. And he didn't. They picked the norms. That normally happens when there's a uh, presidential election and it's the end of a president's term. They don't usually go along with the uh, designee as Obama put him up. And Mitch McConnell, only one of the few things, few things that Mitch McConnell has ever done that was positive was stop Merrick Garland from getting on the Supreme Court. But the fact of the matter is, we are getting the opposite end. He is getting his revenge on the Republicans and Trump particularly. Let's listen to this. I mean, just listen to this. Take it all in. This is the highest ranking law enforcement officer in the country. Alerted with the idea of holding the FBI director in contempt. Um, it's become a talking point on uh, the campaign trail, um, the alleged corruption in, in the FBI and other federal law enforcement agencies. Um, do the American people have cause to be concerned about the integrity of the components of this Justice Department? And, and what do you have to say about how they're acting? They go after anti-abortion protesters. They go after parents at school board meetings. They call them terrorists. They put flags that have been part of our culture for years, the Betsy Ross flag, the Gadsden flag, and others, and now those are supposedly terrorist symbols. This guy is reaping his revenge, and that is no place in the Justice Department. I certainly uh, understand that, that some have chosen to attack the integrity of the Justice Department as components and its employees by claiming that we do not treat like cases alike. Uh, this constitutes an attack on an institution that is essential to American democracy and essential to the safety of the American people. Nothing could be further from the truth. You've all heard me say many times that we make our cases based on the facts and the law. These are not just words. These are what we live by. They are the foundation of the way we make these decisions. The agents of the FBI, as well as the DEA, the ATF, our uh, deputy U.S. marshals, every day, often at great personal risk, protect the American people and secure its safety. 
I, our cases are based on their work. I could not be more proud to work. I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Got fired. <laughs> Documents, their authenticity. This is the question again to the spokesman for the White House, not the press secretary. This is from a different angle. And I want you to look at the faces in the press corps. These are the morons. These are the one-sided liars that did everything in their power to make sure that Joe Biden was president of the United States. And look at them now. They're not too happy, are they? We've got nobody to blame but yourself. No one. You know we're a challenge. Uh, that included a July 2017 WhatsApp message sent by Hunter Biden to Henry Zhao, a Chinese Communist Party official, which stated in its entirety, and I quote, I am sitting here with my father, and we would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. Tell the director that I would like to resolve this now before it gets out of hand, and now means tonight. And Z, if I get a call or text from anyone involved in this other than you, Zhang, or the chairman, I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me and every person he knows, and my ability to forever hold a grudge, that you will regret not following my direction. I am sitting here waiting for the call with my father, unquote. Interesting. Look at the crowd here. I've seen wakes that have had happier people in them. <laughs> so just a couple of questions about this. First, does this not undermine uh, the president's claim during the 2020 campaign and the reaffirmations of that claim by his two press secretaries since then that he never once discussed his son's overseas business dealings with him? No, and I'm not going to comment further on this. We're going to, we're, I, 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 I'm not, James, James, let me just, let me save you some, let me save, let me say, let me save you some breath. If you're going to ask about this, I am not address. I don't, I know you do more than I'd like you to have. I am not going to address this issue from this podium. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. See you in Diamond. Now, think about this for a minute. What if that was Trump's White House and that was somebody from Trump's administration that did that? They would be held to pay. There's not just a two tier justice system, there's a two tier press covering the facts and what goes on problem. And it's, been, it's gotten worse and worse and worse. Now, look at, look at Biden's reaction when he's asked. That a, that a political rival is getting indicted. Look, look at the reaction that he has. This is disgusting. Biden voters, please reconsider. I know you think you're doing the right thing, but look what, how it's turned out. There's a way to fix this. Just admit you were wrong. The Democrat Party that you loved for years, probably your whole life, doesn't exist anymore. I used to be a local elected official as a Democrat. I left the party over a decade ago. Please reconsider what you're thinking. <laughs> now, folks, what are we going to do about it? What are you going to do? Here we have the sitting president of the United States. And I don't want to hear it wasn't his directive for the DOJ to go after Trump and other people. Put your animosity and your hatred towards Trump aside. Yes, he is a flawed individual. Yes, he has a lot of shortcomings. He has a lot of good things, too. This is about the future of our country. Because what's going to happen next this is going to be a Democrat challenger. And the sitting Republican president is going to make sure that his or her DOJ goes after them. It's going to happen. Believe it. Is that what you really want? Every single front runner in a presidential election indicted for absolutely nothing just for political points? 
More than half of the American people believe that Trump's indictments were politically motivated. Yet still, yet still half of those people, if not more, would support the Democratic candidate and Joe Biden. Think about what you're doing to our future. Think about your children and your grandchildren. What kind of country do you want to leave them? This isn't about policy. This is about destroying the fabric of our country. Please, please stop and think. It's tough admitting you were wrong. I've admitted I was wrong many times in my life. It's not easy. I get it. Just take a deep breath and stop. Stop supporting these people. It's the only way to get rid of them. It's the only way to turn this country around. I pray that you listen. And until next time, goodbye, God bless, and good luck.